I'll tell you what, what a method. He's just playing for pride now. Can't see him clawing his way back into this match. Oh, and not after that. The power. That's what he's doing. Oh. What a shot that was. <laughs> yes, he'd have screwed to the cushion normally to make the pink a certainty. Let's see if he can get the deep screw. How'd you like those apples? Not many of those in a pound jump. Hit the side rail not too heavy, but let the side take the wide around the angles. Not easy shot to play. Now, yesterday he potted one of these out of a snooker against Justin Sage. Oh, he's done it, he's done again. it again. Apparently, they're that. Shot. Apparently, you're supposed to snook yourself. That's a sick shot. Absolutely incredible. Don't think we gave that an, uh, really the uh, excitement it deserves, Steve, because uh, you try lining that up at home, that is not easy. And the bread and butter shot from Mark Robertson. All right, welcome back to another one. Uh, in this one, we're going to be talking about uh, the Q action of the great Mark Robertson. Here he is. Thanks, Pete. The great. The great. <laughs> All right, take it away. Uh, so the, uh, the Robertson Q action. Uh, obviously, uh, a lot of people have seen Neil play and is, um, is, is right up there with uh, one of the best Q actions of all time. A lot of people say the best Q action of all time. Um, and apparently mine's not too bad as well. Uh, so I've got to, I've got to dedicate that to my dad. Uh, he's a uh, more interested in the, uh, the, the technical side of the game and the science of the game. So the, the Q action and how you deliver the Q, um, was far more fascinating to him than a lot of other aspects of the game. So he really just drilled that into Neil and I when from a very, very young age, if we ever missed a ball, it was because of Q action, it was because of the Q action. Sometimes I try to tell him I just wasn't even concentrating or wasn't <laughs> even really thinking, but it was always the Q action. So um, little did I know that that would hold uh, Neil and I in, in good stead. Um, there was uh, just your, your standard drills, like your, your long blues off the spot. Everyone knows these drills, but they're very good. Um, just your long queuing ones, where you're, you're stunning the red, you're, you're topping it through, you're screwing back. And um, something that I thought I'd point out because everyone knows this one on, on the snooker table where you, you'll be, well, so to do it properly would be to step in with the line of the shot, step in with the line of shot, one, two, and then down, and same amount of feathers, one, one, two, pause. So the same, the same every time is important. Uh, I'm not a professional, but my brother Neil is, and if you watch him, every shot is always back, he's quite tall. One, two, down, and lots of smooth flowing feathers. Also, if anyone was to watch Neil practice, they'll see that there's no goofy muck around shots ever. Never once have I seen him just get down and just throw the cue around at a shot because that creates bad habits. So for him, it's the same every time, and for me, the most part. So I was doing this drill overseas, and uh, I was showing Neil, like I'm getting pretty decent at it. And I set it up, and I knocked in the blue, and then I went to set it up and do it again. And he went, whoa, 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 what are you doing? It's the same shot. I'm like, yeah, that's long blues. He said, no, 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 you've got to move the white to the four different corners of the table because your arm is going to be in different positions. Like here, it's here. If I was to play it over here, my arm now rests on the rail. Not only that, but the background changes. So. It's important that when you're doing queuing exercises, not just to do the exact same thing every time. And why would the background make a difference? Um, because you might, you might get a tournament and you'll be playing a shot this way and there's just a blank wall. You might be playing a shot this way and all of a sudden there's a bar over there with people everywhere. You might be playing a shot this way and there's an open window with sunlight coming through. You need to be able to handle the environment of everywhere that you're playing. So, a, um, another example of an exercise that my dad got us to do, object all about in line with the pink spot on the snooker table. Any queuing exercises, even if you're an eight ball player or a nine ball player on the American tables, get on the snooker table. You, it will be, you will get 10 times more value out of it. 
So when you're doing an exercise like this as an example, he got, my dad got us to try and pop this and stop the wire, but hit it as soft as possible. So it was almost like a drag shot, but, but keeping the backspin on the wire. And that, that allowed you to be able to time the ball really nicely and keep your cue action, also help develop cue power. But what I would suggest, a slight alteration on that, is just move the wire forward and back a little bit. Because if you put it in the exact same spot, every time where it's most comfortable you're only going to get that feeling so all of a sudden if i bring that white ball back just a little bit my hand is not comfortable anymore now it's at that that awkward height and now i've either got to dig down a little bit or have a longer bridge and now reaching so it's important to also just move that a little bit forward and back so whenever you're doing your queuing exercises just alter them a little bit so you've actually got to think fresh every time and it's not just so 100% rinse and repeat. Very good. Um, and if someone were to want to work on their cueing as of now, whether they've just started playing or whether they've been playing for years, what, what advice do you think you could give them? Well, back in the day when I used to work in my cue action, we didn't have mobile phones. So you would literally get a stool, you'd put the stool there and you would get a mirror put the mirror up on the stool and you would play in front of it and you could actually see where your elbow is because we didn't just have the luxury of being able to record like you're doing now but now you can just set a tripod up or whatever you want and get your camera and just record a video of you playing so you can see your arm you want to be striking the ball when your forearm is vertical not there that means you're striking on the follow-through and not there, that means you're, you're pushing, you're, you're still uh, accelerating, you're gonna push the wide off target. If you think about golf, any of these other sports, it's always in the middle. Tennis, golf, all these other sports, the ball's centered, it's not, golf ball's not there, it's there. So same thing, elbow straight, uh, elbow straight there, shoulder up, don't drop the shoulder, step into the shot every time, everything's exactly the same. All right, there you have it, the Q actions of the Robertsons. Uh, again, if you like what you see, please like and subscribe. And uh, again, thanks Mark for uh, sharing some of that vital information and uh, hopefully helping some, uh, some new players out there. No problem, cheers Nick. Cheers.